Hello? Oh, hi, Sandy. How's Mark doing? notice that once you have kids, your life changes. For example, sleep becomes something from a distant memory. Something from the old days. Uh, end up taking 14 hours of video of a kid shaking a rattle, and then you never look at that video again. And you soon find out that your house has turned into a minefield of potential disaster. This is what you have to remember. First of all, you're never alone. And secondly, kids will always go after the wrong thing. <laughs> for example, rule of thumb, if they can reach it, they will grab for it. Remember, Andrew, the food goes in the hole just below the nose. Very good. Kids are absolutely the best. But you have to watch out and always expect the unexpected. <clears throat> Andrew, <laughs> let me just remind you, honey, that it's one phone call to Mr. Lawyer and suddenly Andrew's out of the inheritance. <laughs> That's the thing to remember. Anyway, with kids, you never know what to do. Oh, <laughs> okay, honey. Hot, hot, hot tea on daddy. <laughs> what to expect? In my job as a director of a busy emergency department, I see many accidents that should not happen. Burns from spilled hot coffee or tea are very common and often preventable. If your child receives a burn, remove any jewelry and clothing as long as it is not sticking to the burned area before swelling begins. Immerse under running cold water or in a filled sink or basin for about five minutes or until pain diminishes. If a sink or basin is unavailable, apply clean, cold compresses until pain diminishes. Cover the burn loosely with a dry, clean, non-stick dressing. Never apply anything other than cold water. That includes antiseptic spray, butter, greasy ointments, lotions, or chemical neutralizers. Never apply direct pressure to a burn and be sure to keep the burn clean. For chemical burns, just wash in water repeatedly for 15 to 20 minutes. While washing, remove any contaminated clothing. If the chemical is a powder, brush off before flushing with water. Cover the burn with a sterile cloth and call medical help immediately. Keep pot handles facing inward. Don't keep matches lying loose. Keep children away from the iron, stove or other dangerous appliances and be sure to put safety covers on all electrical outlets. Hello? Buddy! Buddy, who'd they go with? What do you mean, Howie Mandel? Why? Tyne Daly has problems with me. Well, let me just tell you what I think of Tyne Daly, okay? Oh, hold on, buddy. Hey, what are you doing? Put that down. Honey, this is medicine, and you're never to touch this unless Mommy or I give it to you. Medicine can make you very sick. You have to be more careful than that. Daddy, do you think I know that already? You do? She does? Daddy, don't you know you can never leave mess in the reach of children? Andrew could have climbed up and grabbed it. Well, 
I, you know, the phone rang, and I just, you know, I went to get it. <clears throat> I was going to put it away, for heaven's sakes. Daddy, it's just not good enough. I know that. Daddy, as soon as you're finished with your medicine, you should put it away. <sighs> very, very good, honey. See, you passed Daddy's little test. I was just hoping that you'd notice. Daddy, no, you weren't. Yes, I was. Daddy, why can't you just admit that you made a mistake? All I'm asking is that you be honest and you take responsibility for what you did. <laughs> I failed you. Daddy, you're only human. Humans aren't perfect. I still love you. You hear that? She still loves me. My baby. Mm. Household poisoning is one of the most preventable accidents, with children under five being the most likely victims. Many busy parents don't realize how many poisonous substances there are in the average home. Certain household plants, if ingested, could be fatal. As well, there are many household products and medications that can be potentially fatal to a child. If your child has ingested poison, you must first call your local poison control center or local hospital emergency department. The number should be beside or on all of your phones in case of emergency. Make sure that you have the bottle in front of you when you call. Do not go by the directions on the bottle for they are not always correct. Before you call, make sure you know your child's weight, age, the time the poison was taken, and the amount. Do not give your child food or drink or induce vomiting unless instructed by poison control or a physician. If your child has inhaled poison, take the child to fresh air. Protect yourself from gases. Tap the child to check for a response. If there is no response, call for an ambulance. If the child is conscious, call poison control for direction. In case of poison on skin, remove contaminated clothing and wash the skin for at least 10 minutes. Do not break blisters. Try to identify the poison and call poison control. If the poison starts to burn, treat it as a chemical burn. Make sure there are locks on all cabinets, cupboards, and drawers containing medication or potentially hazardous household products. Keep medication in its original container and do not remove labels. Never transfer medication or cleaning supplies to a food or drink container. Carefully read the labels on any medication before administering it, paying close attention to the dosage and warning statements. Use non-toxic finishes and lead-free paint when painting and refinishing. Keep poisonous chemicals and items out of reach. This includes alcohol, houseplants, cleaning supplies, all handbags including those of visitors, cosmetics such as nail polish and hairspray, and basement and garage supplies such as mothballs, paints and fertilizers. Daddy, can you tell me all about the birds and the bees? Uh, honey, don't you think you're a little bit young to be learning about such things? Well, Sarah's daddy told her all about the birds and the bees. He did? What did she say he said? She said I should ask you. Uh, <clears throat> all right then. Well, bees are little insects that fly around and they can sting you if you're not careful. Children love to be outdoors, but here they must share their environment with insects. The majority of insect bites are not serious. But if your child should develop swelling of the eyes, the face, the lips, or have any trouble breathing or swallowing, this is an emergency and you must seek medical help immediately. Wash the affected area. Remove the stinger by gently scraping the skin with a knife. Do not use tweezers because squeezing the stinger may inject more poison. 
To control pain and swelling, apply an ice pack over a cloth for 5 to 10 minutes. Calamine or other lotions may be used to control itching. Don't scratch the skin. To keep the child from scratching, trim the fingernails. Ever since I became a father, I developed a new talent. The art of bandaging. Really? Mm-hmm. Still hurt, baby? Not as much. You're being very brave. You're just like me when I was your age. Grandma told me that you got scratched on your elbow and you cried for two days. <laughs> Did she? Minor cuts and scrapes are a part of every child's growing up. However, some cuts can be more serious than others. It's important in every case to guard against infection. Immediately control the bleeding by applying pressure on the wound with your hand. As soon as possible, replace with gauze or a clean cloth. Continue applying direct pressure until the bleeding stops. Avoid lifting the dressing to inspect the wound. If it doesn't hurt the child, elevate the injured limb. After bleeding is controlled, bandage firmly. If the area below the wound is cold or blue, the bandage is too tight. If you need to take the child to a doctor, use a sling or bandages to immobilize the injured limb. The scraped area must be cleaned by flushing it with running water. Soap and water may be used to carefully clean the area around the wound. Dry the wound, then cover the wound with a sterile dry gauze dressing. If the scrape becomes very tender and red, it could be infected. A doctor should be contacted. Don't try to remove embedded objects from the wound. If bleeding persists, it's very important to seek medical help. And now, we'll show you how to deal with nosebleeds. Tilt the child's head forward. Pinch the nose just below the bone. Hold the nose for at least 10 minutes without checking it. If bleeding persists, call your doctor. What do you mean you don't want to go out with me? You go out with all the other boys. It's just I don't find you attractive. Your ears are so terribly big. Well, I suppose blue hair is the big new craze? Well, listen, you're the one who's getting rejected. Don't insult me, you little idiot. Oh, oh stop it, stop it. Oh, stop, stop it. <laughs> oh, hi there. <clears throat> oh, boy. Kids love their toys, don't they? You gotta love them. You know, my, my daughter came home the other day with a, uh, a gun. Uh, well, not a real gun, but, I mean, it shot pellets or spikes or something frightening. She'd traded it, you know, for an old toy of hers from a friend at school. Anyway, I look out the window, and there she's actually shooting it at her little brother. Well, I go running outside, and I grab it from her, and I say, don't you realize that you could take someone's eye out with this? Which is exactly an expression that my parents used to say to me, uh, but I never really thought that I would be saying it to my child, but of course we all become our parents. I mean, that's, that's old news. Anyway, I, I made her take the gun back to her friend and get her old toy back, and she was none too pleased, may I add. And, uh, but you have to be tough sometimes to be a good parent. And to make a child play with safe toys sometimes does not win you a popularity contest, but that's just the way it is. And the way I handle it is I, I, I take them out for a huge ice cream cone and then take them to a toy store where I buy safe toys, the kind that you have to really lift and tie to the top of the roof rack. Are the most effective. Good. Eye injuries are some of the more common and serious injuries that I see in young children. I often see children that come in having been hit in the eye with a baseball, they've been hit by a twig or a stick, or a dangerous toy. If a foreign object enters an eye, do not try to remove it. If this is not done properly, it could cause serious damage to the eye. Seek medical help immediately. Keep the child from rubbing the injured eye and don't try to remove contact lenses. When a chemical enters the eye, flush the eye immediately in gently running lukewarm water for at least 15 minutes. Make sure to tilt the head so that the water doesn't run into the other eye. If you're outside, flush the eye the same way using a garden hose. Your eye's fine, Noah. Bye. Another common eye injury is the black eye. This kind of injury can be very deceiving. There can be significant damage 
even if there are no symptoms. So it's very important to have this injury checked. I don't feel well, Mommy. I know, sweetie. Here, drink some more water. Oh, it can't be that high. Faye, it is high! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Six. Thank you. See you later. If your child develops a fever, use the medication that's recommended by your doctor. Plenty of fluids and lots of rest is important. If the fever can't be reduced, call your doctor. In some cases, a very high fever can bring on a seizure. Although seizures are very uncommon, in the event that one does occur, clear the area of objects that might cause harm to the child. Try to loosen clothing, turn the child on their side in the recovery position until it subsides. Almost all seizures will end after one or two minutes. The child must see a doctor. Meanwhile, watch breathing closely. If your child has a fever, it usually means they have an infection. In general, fevers in children are not dangerous. However, if you have any concern at all, call your doctor and have the child examined. Yeah, almost. Okay, and the last piece de resistance. I don't want to wear a hat. Oh, you have to, baby, to protect you against too much sun. You don't want to get a sunburn. I don't like hats. Ah, uh, someday you'll thank me. It's for your own good. It's for her own good. Extensive and repeated exposure to the sun, beginning in childhood, is a major cause of skin cancer. Most experts believe that there's no such thing as a safe tan. It's important to avoid the sun between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. when the sun is the strongest and always use a sunblock with an SPF of 15 or higher. If your child gets a sunburn, treat it as you would a first or second degree burn. Immerse the burned area in cold water for at least five minutes or apply a clean wet cloth. Cover with a sterile, non-stick dressing. If your child feels weak from the heat, check for the following symptoms of heat exhaustion. Pale, clammy skin, rapid breathing, perspiration, dizziness, nausea and vomiting. Move the child to a cool area. Remove excess clothing. Elevate the feet and legs and give the child plenty of water. The following will help lower the child's temperature a cold shower, an air-conditioned room, or a rub down with a cool cloth. An advanced form of heat exhaustion is sunstroke. Look out for the following symptoms. Hot, red, dry skin, a high temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit or 39 degrees Celsius, or unconsciousness. Immediately call for help. Meanwhile, sponge the child's body with cool water and place a wet cloth on his head. If the child is conscious and not feeling nauseated, provide him with sips of water. Seek medical help immediately. Always wear a hat and drink plenty of water. Do not eat hot foods or have heavy meals. Avoid strenuous exercise. If possible, keep out of direct exposure to the sun. Wear light-colored clothing to reflect the heat. In extreme heat waves, it is best to stay indoors. Now we come to a very important segment, which is, <laughs> which is uh, that's funny, I, I, I was just thinking about it. Just give me a second here. Dad? Yeah, baby? Have you saw my coloring book? Uh, no. What are you doing? Would you get down from there? What do you want to do, break your, oh yeah, now I remember. Whenever a broken bone is suspected, seek medical help immediately. Remember, it's very important not to give the child anything to eat or drink in case an operation is required. If a bone protrudes, control the bleeding in the surrounding area without applying direct pressure on the bone. Then cover the bone with a large clean dressing or cloth. Do not clean the wound and if possible, immobilize it with a splint. Do not elevate the limb or try to reset dislocations. Be sure to seek medical help. If the child has sustained a head injury, a different procedure is necessary. 
watch the child for nausea, vomiting, headache, drowsiness, or any unusual changes in the child's behavior. If your child has fallen and can't get up, get medical help immediately. Even if the child can move his head, do not attempt to move him. By moving him, you could cause permanent damage. Falls and fractures are among the most common accidents I see in the emergency department. Many of these can be avoided with proper prevention. Make sure all carpets are securely anchored and floors are not slippery. Don't leave toys lying around, particularly on stairs, and teach your child to pick up after themselves. Beware of diving into pools where you don't know the depth. Use skid-proof mats or stickers in the bathtub. Be sure all low windows are locked and screened. Put barriers at the top and bottom of stairs until toddlers show that they are steady on their feet and can use the handrails properly. And the kids go to bed around 8.30. Mm -hmm. You know our address in case there's an emergency and you have to call 911. And um, there's other emergency numbers on the fridge. Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Come on, Mike, let's go. Yeah, I'll be right out, okay? Okay. Just one Hurry second. Hurry up, though. Okay. Now, if there's any problem, we're going to be at La Familia restaurant at 7.30 and then we're going to go to a movie. Okay, so that means that at 7 to 7.25, we are driving to the restaurant, and this is the cellular phone number, okay? Mm -hmm. Then from 7.25 to 7.30, we're walking into the restaurant. I, that's the beeper number. You can beep me if there's a problem between that time. 7.30 to 8.45, we'll be eating dinner, but I'm going to eat light tonight because I'm a little bit of a diet who isn't, you know? But I'm going to have dessert, therefore, so I'll be walking on the block for about 10 minutes at 8.45 to... Uh, 8.55, and then you can get the beeper number again, okay? No problem there. Now we were going to the movie, so we're back into the car phone. Right? When the babysitter comes to take care of your children, always make sure they have all the information they need in case of an emergency, a number where you can be reached, your home number, and address. A list of emergency numbers should be displayed next to or on all the phones in the house. This should include the Poison Control Center, Fire Department, police, hospital emergency, ambulance, 24-hour taxi, and friends or relatives who are available to help. They should also know of any special medical problems concerning your child. Choose babysitters who are mature and knowledgeable in first aid and accident prevention. Make sure the babysitter knows your home well, where you keep the first aid supplies, power supply switch, emergency exits, and areas which are out of limits for the child. The babysitter's time should be spent taking care of the child and checking up on the child once they have been put to bed. Babysitters should not be entertaining friends, doing chores, sleeping, or tying up the phone, which may be needed in case of an emergency. This way, their full attention will be on the child. But I'm not going to stay for credits because I'm not a credit man. I've never been. So at 10.55 to 11, we'll be going back from the lobby of the movie theater to the car. And then at 11 to 11.15, we're back into the whole cellular phone land and driving home, okay? Do okay. you have all that? Uh, so what time will you be leaving? What I'm gonna teach you now is something I've never taught another living soul. It's only because I love you so much that I'm gonna tell you the secret to the happy dance. Dance for me. Get the leg moving. Have fun with some sort of a palm tree in an island of your choice. Hey, 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 what are you doing there? Now listen, what have I told you? If you want to eat something, you got to sit down or you'll end up choking. Now you have a choice here. You can either learn the happy dance or you can eat jelly beans. What is it going to be? Daddy, I'd love to do your happy dance with you, but I'd rather eat some jelly beans. They love to hurt, don't they? Oh, well. Shame to waste a good tape. Yes! Oh. Oh. Hello! I'm swatting a fly. <laughs> this place is full of flies. We're going to be showing you what to do if a child or an infant is choking. This is an extremely important segment. If your child is choking, you won't have time to wait for medical help. When performing first aid, it's always important to stay calm, particularly in this kind of situation. Remember, you can't be rational when you're hysterical, and hysteria will only frighten your child more. You must keep the patient calm. Talking to them, touching them, reassuring them will help to do this. 
but you can't calm someone when you're hysterical yourself. Ask the child if they can speak, breathe, cough, or make good sound noises. If they can, just encourage them to bend forward and let them cough. Do not slap the child on the back. If they cannot breathe, speak, or cough clearly, shout for help and send someone to call for an ambulance. You must stay with the child. Stand behind the child, kneel down, and wrap your arms around their waist, placing a fist between their navel and the bottom of the rib cage. Grasp your fist with your other hand and quickly pull inwards and upwards in one thrusting motion to dislodge the object. Continue thrusts until you have removed the blockage or the child becomes unconscious. The force of the thrusts should be less for a smaller child. This is the Heimlich maneuver. A choking infant can't cry, cough or breathe clearly. Their face may be red, lips blue, eyes bulging and a panicked look on their face. Send someone to call for an ambulance. If you are alone with the baby, carry them to the phone with you, call for help, and then open the front door. Grasp the infant's jaw with your thumb and fingers. Slide your other hand behind the infant's back so that your fingers support the infant's back, head, and neck. Turn the infant over so that he is face down on your forearm. Support the head by holding the jaw and resting your forearm on your thigh. With the infant's head lower than his chest, give four firm back blows between the shoulder blades using the heel of your hand. This may expel the object and the baby will begin crying. If the back blows don't dislodge the object, turn the infant face up supporting their head, neck and back. Place three fingers on the breastbone just below the imagined line with the top finger touching the line. Lift the top finger. Using the other two fingers, press against the breastbone four times. Compress a half to one inch. This will force the air in the lungs back up the windpipe to expel the blockage. Continue back blows and chest thrusts until the infant can breathe or professional help arrives or the infant becomes unconscious. Even when you succeed in removing the blockage, the child must see a doctor. We have given you a basic introduction to helping a conscious choking victim. We did not discuss unconscious choking, rescue breathing or CPR. Therefore, we highly encourage you to take a first aid course which will include these life-saving procedures. This video is by no means a substitute for live training. <coughs> Perfect. Oh, hi. <laughs> I just finished uh, putting a safety latch in this drawer so the baby can't get in here. Just in time, may I add, because Dr. Pfefferman is coming over to give me the safe proofing test, which is a test that you should take as well. Now, don't panic. This is not a formal uh, affair with a man coming in with a clipboard and checking things off. No, 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 no. He's just really coming over here to, to give me a summary of how well I've safe-proofed the house. Of course, I'm kind of confident because, uh, well, I have done my homework. And he's here. Dr. Fieferson. Pfefferman. Pfefferman, hi. How are you, Marty? I'm good. I was just reading a book. Are you ready for the inspection? The inspection? Yeah, today's it's Thursday. I said I'd come by. <laughs> I completely, it slipped my mind. <laughs> I see you, you brought a clipboard. Let's get going. Oh, sure. Let's start here in the kitchen. Hi. Looks pretty good. No cords hanging down, I don't see any knives, no sharp objects. You got all your outlets plugged up? Plugged up, yes. Well, <laughs> you know, you do what you can do. <laughs> so often I, I go into other people's kitchens and I... Is this your uh, garbage compactor here? Yes. It's... Doesn't it work? No, 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 I, you need a key. Good. Where do you keep it? Uh, in a, in a, a locked uh, drawer. Oh, good. With a key out of reach, the kids can't get to it and turn the machine on. Right. What's down here? Uh, uh, you know, just garbage uh, can and rags and things, you know. Cleaning solvents, detergents? Oh, no, no, we keep them up here, out of the reach of children. Very good. Yes, well. Where are your knives? 
Knives are uh, in this drawer. Locked? Uh, yeah, safety latch, actually, that I installed today. <laughs> Good work. I, they, well, I nicked my finger actually doing it. It bled, you know, for a while. I, I, I wondered, you know, what, what does merit a 911 call? It, this area in your kitchen around the stove is one of the most dangerous areas. Remember, keep your pot handles in. Mm. All the elements should be off, and it's a good idea when you're cooking, use the back burners. Back burner, yes. I see too many children that get burned by pulling hot pots on themselves or touching the elements. Right. Where to next? Well, Dr. Fessenden, I would say uh, upstairs would... Uh, Do you have a first aid kit? Ah, yes, yes, right here. Up high? Yes. Good. Out of reach? Yes, always. Drink? <laughs> no, thanks. You keep it locked? Excuse me? Keep the first aid kit locked? Oh, yes, always locked. Locked. First aid kit is the way to go, I think. Good work, Marty. Your kitchen's perfect. Oh, thank you. You have a lot of books here. Thank you. Have you read them all? Uh, no, not really. Although I do uh, write true in the margin to impress people. I like what you did with your stereo equipment. You put it high up, out of reach, and the cords are in the back so the children can't play with them. Mm hmm Good. Hold this for a sec. Sure. These bookshelves are good and solid. What'd you do, nail them to the wall? Right, I just... Hammered one day, went on a hammering spree. <laughs> I like these safety edges on the corners here. It's a common thing for the children to fall against these tables and cut themselves. Yeah, well, we were going for an eclectic look here, and round tables didn't really cut it, you know. Peanuts? Oh, go ahead. These are very dangerous. They're small and they're salty. The children will put them in their mouths, and it's a common thing they choke on. Put them in the cupboard so the kids can't get at them. I see all your lights bar ceiling lights and wall lights. That's a good idea because the floor lamps can fall on the children or they can pull them down on themselves. Right. Well, I have a two-year-old, so we're constantly, we're kind of light conscious. But this is a problem. Right. See how that cord hangs down? I've seen children pull these table lamps on top of their heads or they'll bite on that cord and they can get a bad electrical burn. That's quite dangerous. Of course, you're right. Why don't you take the cord and wrap it around the base of the lamp and put it behind the table so the children can't play with it. It's a beautiful room you have here. What? Oh, uh, thank you. <clears throat> Where are you going now? You've got safety gates at the top of the bottom of your stairs. Yes. This is very good. Good. Is this the baby's room? <clears throat> yes, it is. So, this is the nursery. It's a beautiful room. Oh, thank you. Wallpaper's fun. So, um, let's see, we always make sure there aren't little toys around that he could put in his mouth, especially in the crib, of course. And uh, we never leave a pillow in the crib. It's a check. And also, the crib is safety approved. I can see that. These yeah. uh, are close enough together so he can't get through them. Right. Uh, let's see. The, the playpen, we never leave a uh, big toy or a box in the playpen so that he could use it to climb out of. But it, look at this bear. The eye's missing. That's dangerous. No, no, that's, that's just, uh, the, the bear's just winking coyly, I think. Nope, that eye is definitely missing. You have is to make bad? sure, yep, you have to make sure all these toys are safety approved and appropriate for the age. <sighs> see, this is a gift from his Aunt Nora, and she is just, I mean, and look at this balloon. What? A lot of people don't realize how dangerous balloons can be. What's wrong? He loves, he loves this balloon. Yeah, but when the children try to blow them up, they can suck them into their windpipe. Or they'll bite on this, and the balloon will break and go into their mouths. <sighs> See, I, 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 I didn't even realize that. That's just... It's okay, Marty. You really are doing quite well. Oh, don't condescend to me, doctor. All right? Just, you know, just stay to your little checks. And... Here, let's come with me. I'm relatively confident about the bathroom. 
Is your medicine cabinet locked? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I, I, in fact, installed the lock myself. This is locked and this is open. Good. A lot of dangerous stuff in that medicine cabinet. Yeah. You know, Marty, the most dangerous part in the bathroom is the bathtub. You must never leave children unattended in a bathtub, no. even for a minute. No, no, I wouldn't do it. Good, you've got non-skid mats. Mm -hmm. And I see all the electrical appliances are not near the water. That's good, too. Marty, it's perfect. Yes! Perfect. You heard the man, and that man happens to be a doctor. Oh, doctor, I'm... Beautiful garden you have here. Thank you. Who's your gardener? Oh, well, my wife and I basically do it. Uh, she does more of the work work part, and I'm kind of the idea guy. It's a nice pool. Thank you. I see you keep it fenced in. You know, uh, pools are a danger area when you have kids. Yes, I know. Every year I see a couple of kids that drown in a pool because it's not fenced in and the kids aren't watched. Yeah. You always keep it locked? Always, always locked. That's very important. Yeah. yeah. Let's go inside. I'm Mr. Lock. <laughs> No, Marty, this pool cover should be rolled up when kids are swimming in the pool. Yes. I'd always be worried that some child would swim underneath it and get caught, could drown. You know, and the most important thing about these pools is never leave a child unattended or swimming alone. Oh, absolutely no. That would, that would not happen in this home. Good. I knew if... I knew if... Glad to see you have the garage door opener up high. It's out of the way of children. Yes. It's also a combination that makes it even safer. You know, Marty, these garage doors can be very dangerous. I've seen some children ride up and down, they fall off, they get their fingers caught in the cracks. Oh, I have a, a five-year-old girl who plays a game of racing underneath just as the door is closing. So I had to install a pressure-sensitive device that makes it stop and reverse direction when it meets an obstacle. That's smart. Yeah, well, Good thing to do. Thanks. Well, the garage looks pretty good, too. Oh, thank you. I built it myself with the help of people I hired to build it. All the chemicals are stored up high out of reach. Yes. The tools. Very See high. that they're in a safe place. The kids can't get at them. No. Does your daughter ride this bike? Yes. That's her uh, little helmet. She always wear it? Always. Oh. Yes. Very important. Most yes. important safety rules, they should always have their helmets. On their heads, always. Right. done a super job in safe proofing your home. Thank you. You've really made it a safe place for you and your children. I brought this along. It's a little pin. It's a token. Just to remind you that the best way of treating a household accident is by prevention. Well, thank you, Dr. Pfefferman, and uh, I will definitely take care of those things you mentioned. That's very nice. Is this mother of pearl? It's fake. Ah. Catching, I'll wear this certainly today, anyway. <laughs> thank you. Mm, kidding. Just fooled you. My humor. Well, yes, good. I was going to say, buckle in. Anyway, off you go and um, be sure to write. Having a family is one of the most rewarding and significant experiences in life. And knowing first aid and providing a safe environment for your children will allow you to relax and truly enjoy parenting. Because let's face it, kids are the best. Oh. 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 Although they can't have their moments. <laughs> All right. Just for that, you will suffer the wrath of the EA monster. Now I will use your head as a battering ram. <laughs> and now, lunch, toes over sausage. <laughs>
seizure. I, oh, DA's having a bit of a mild seizure. Where's Dr. Walker, Mitzelton, when you need him? Whoa.